Are you serious? Are you serious, guys? Well, what did I, what, what can I say? Market professionals are saying today, Donald Trump is a genius. And we could have told him that, but now even his most harsh critics are saying the man is masterful in his ability to negotiate and reposition the economy for the United States of America. Matter of fact, Donald Trump, is he playing chess? I think he's playing several games of chess at once with a lot of rookies and uh, just not, they don't see guys, they're playing checkers out there. Matter of fact, one economist begrudgingly seems to suggest that maybe this is the case. Gluskin chefs David Rosenberg, who just last month asked if President Trump was trying to lose the 2020 election with his tariffs, is now saying the president's recent moves might all be part of his grand plan to extend his stay in the White House. Rosenberg tweeted this today, maybe Trump is a genius. After all, what if he finally gets the steep Fed rates cut he's been demanding? After that, he ends the trade wars, the tariffs go to zero, and the stock market surges to new highs, just in time for the 2020 election. Well, his tweet gained plenty of attention across the finance Twitter world, as uh, several other analysts say, Trump's playing the field and the Feds like a fiddle. Uh, guys, listen, we got to, what's going on here? Uh, we got to bring in the expert. We got to bring in the, the real genius. And what's he think about the Trump being a genius? How about Bob Kudla of TradeGeniusAcademy.com? Bob, what's going on? Hey, hey, Paul, I reached out to President Trump and told him he has a now with us since he has that, that moniker attached to his name. So, uh. <laughs> maybe, maybe hey, look, you know we talked. We talked about this before. Since Trump does not fear people, and he understands how to negotiate, and he also understands that he he knows he can outlast his opponents in just about everywhere because he knows how weak people are. That he he knows he can push people along the way. Somebody put a note out the other day saying. He didn't conclude anything he started. I said, yeah, but he's gotten everything he's wanted. So he doesn't care if he ever never concludes a deal with China. He got his tariffs. He doesn't care if he concludes a deal with Mexico. He got his tariffs, and he's, he put the wall out front and center. The Democrats want to impeach him. He's like, go ahead, impeach me. Oh, by the way, I'm releasing everything I have, and I'm going to declassify everything, and we'll just let the American people decide. You know, you, you, no matter where you're, you're up, no problem. I support Brexit. Hey, once they get rid of Europe, I'll do business with uh, with uh, Great Britain. You know, so it, it doesn't even really matter where he goes. He knows what he's doing. And with the Fed, he knew he has to either give the Fed a, a, a fig leaf or he needs to beat them into submission. And this move was just was was perfect because he doesn't have to take off the, the gas on this until he gets exactly what he wants. And he knows now that China, the other thing now, I wish I would have sent this report to you, Paul. Remember, everybody was talking about how the uh, prices of everything is going to go up because of the tariffs. Right. Well, guess what? China is eating it all. The, the, the What's called the prices paid report has barely blipped, meaning that the producers and the importers are eating it, not yeah. the retailer and the customer. Well, don't so you? Well, Bob. he knew exactly this and... You know, good news. Yeah, I mean, think, Bob, you know what they're doing is the uh, retailers are saying to China, the vendor, look, we're not going to take, we're not going to absorb this tariff. You are. They, and, and if you don't, if you can't do it, we'll go get an American manufacturer who will give us a better price. So you're exactly right. Trump's tariffs are, are collecting cash for the federal government, but the uh, companies are pushing back on the vendors, which is China. And so the, the China vendors are having to eat that five, that 25 or 15 percent, whatever it may be, depending on the industry. And look at the stock market. It's at 198 points up right now, might be higher. Last time I looked, I mean, Bob, uh, the market is over 25,000. The prices of food did not go up. The economy, the dollar, the dollar is stronger. I mean, uh, and he's got 
China eating out of his hand. He's got the Iranians crying about the sanctions. He's got he's buying Russian oil to save their lives, and they're pulling out of Venezuela. I mean, this guy's working everybody. Yeah, I mean, because he, you know, he 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 knows. Uh, and look, he's pure economics, you know. And here's the other thing too, you know, and and in all seriousness, and you know, for your listeners, is that you hear a lot about tariffs. And how it, it goes back to Smoot Hawley back in 1930 when when Hoover tried to react to uh, the Great Depression by enacting tariffs. <clears throat> well, that doesn't apply to America because back in 1930 we were the we were the China of 1930 in the sense that we were the massive exporter of goods and services, and today we're the massive importer. So when Trump says we can't lose this war because we already lost it, he means just that. And so we don't have to conclude a deal. China does. Russia does. Not Russia. China does. Mexico does. Japan does. Europe does. We could just keep putting on tariffs until all the jobs come home or all the money stays in America. We don't you know, really, really doesn't care. And he wins either way because he creates velocity. So we won't have a Great Depression because we're doing the tariffs. That, that's people playing upon people's ignorance, educational ignorance, and, and uh, for their own you know, short-sighted gain. So he could just keep pushing this thing and push this thing, and he can modulate this, Paul, as he needs to, to control inflation when eventually there will be price increases pushing through the system because when you have more domestic production, you'll have labor wanting to push prices up, which is okay because everything circles within the economy here in the U.S. So he's on the right path. And, and, and the next thing that's going to happen, Paul, is the infrastructure is going to come up. So if we keep drifting down, like tomorrow if the employment report's a little weak and then we start weakening into the fall, he's, gonna, he's just going to drop a $1 trillion infrastructure package right into Pelosi's and Schumer's lap. And if they start squawking about how you're going to pay for it, he'll say the tariffs will pay for it. When if they don't want to, he'll just do a road show in every vulnerable Democrat's district and said, I got money for you. Just give Nancy a call and Chuck a call and they just, they'll release it for you. If not, vote for me next election, get rid of this House member that's not supporting us or you and we'll get it done next year. So uh, it's, you know, it's, it's incredible. And it's so typical of, of the left. They demonize and dehumanize their enemies, but they actually believe it, Paul. And, and then when they have somebody like Reagan, Reagan was brilliant in, a, in, in his ability to communicate. Trump, brilliant in his ability to negotiate and strategize. You know, you could set other things about him aside, but that's what we hired him for, to do what, exactly what he's doing. He's supporting the American people. And they asked a, a, an auto worker, no, a steel worker yesterday, said, are you worried about the tariffs and this, that, and everything? He goes, look, he goes, he won our shop just because he cared about us. We understand there's pain involved in this, but he cares about us. He, he's looking out for us, and we're willing to absorb the pain to come out on the other side. Nobody else before him cared, Republican nor Democrat. And so, um, look, he out-Democrats the Democrats, and he out-Republicans the Republicans. And that's why, you know, his poll numbers are better than what people give him credit for. Oh, absolutely. And you know, when you bring up the point that, uh, that you no, know, everybody says, but he isn't signing any deals or any major legislation. That's the media. That's that little game. They want to, they want to put a little notch over here. How much did he get done? Yeah, I'll tell you what he got done. He got, he finally got the American people an economy that they can live with and he could care less what the swamp does. He's tired of the swamp. This guy, look, and by the way, Bob, You've been able to, look, folks, this is Bob Kudla from TradeGeniusAcademy.com. If you want to find out how to learn how to trade yourself, this is the guy to do it. Just pick up the phone, call the number 800-949-1408. Let him teach you. That's why he's the Trade Genius Academy. I mean, it's 1-800-949-1408. He's got some great specials. He's running some Father's Day specials. And, Bob, I can't take it no more. I mean, we're still talking about President Trump and and uh, all the powerful things he's doing out there. I mean, look how he's got the British eating out of his hand. The Queen loves them. 
The queen loves them. And Theresa May, he loves her. And he's, he's so glad to see her go away, go away that he was nice to her. And, and uh, he's going to probably be the, I think Trump's going to pick the next prime minister in England. And then he goes to France. And he's got Macron agreeing with him that we got to stop the Iranians. I mean, this is unbelievable. It's the greatest foreign European trip of a president since Roosevelt. I mean, this is unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, look, they isolated Germany, and uh, that's what they wanted to do. Look, Nigel Farage is going to be the, is going to be a prime minister right. of Great Britain within the next two years. Yeah. And look, you know, here's the other thing too: is that he, he's lined up Australia, he's lined up uh, Great Britain, uh, New Zealand's coming on board, and Canada will come on board too. And they're all a united front, an Anglo front against the uh, uh, the Chinese hegemony. So. You know, it's 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 he's really good at helping people understand their self interest, Paul. And I think that's what he appeals to him. You know, your self interest may be now I don't want to lose anymore. Or your self interest is you come with me and there's more goodies in the goodie bag. So he understands all that and and look, you, you, you can't argue with anything he did in the economy. People could quibble about things here or there and, and like I said, you know, everything else, employment, wages you know, GDP, you know, here, in, I live in Southern California, you, you can't, they can't find workers, Paul. They can't find workers. And, and you know, they're raising rates, I mean, well beyond minimum wage here to get anybody competent. And, and I think you're going to see that permeate throughout the whole United States. And, and especially when we start taking control of these primary industries that we, we hand it to, to China in the last two decades, then, then we're going to take the next level forward. So I'm, I'm bullish. People ask me all the time, you know, we're going to go into recession next year. We may go into recession after the election because you can't go 12 years. You know, there'll, there'll be some slippage. And the only, the only black swans that we see out there is, and I sent you a chart on Deutsche Bank. Yeah, you know, we have if, that. If that German bank implodes, Paul, then it could be like a Lehman Brothers moment. And so uh, I don't know what can transpire from that because it's so opaque. We don't know who who's going to get blown up with Deutsche Bank. We know yeah. Europe will get blown up, but we don't know how far those tentacles will will fall. And the other thing that could be a problem, maybe not so much this year, but next year if it continues, is that you know the Midwest in the United States and in Australia. Is, is is under extreme cold the united states is under um extreme wet and in southern russia they're under extreme drought and this is all associated with the grand solar minimum and if we get a repeat year over year food prices could put a, a you know a, a kink in that armor of the economy so those are the two things that i'm watching the most bob one thing we did is we've just put up your chart we have it up there right now of your trades over the last few days that are unbelievable. Folks, let me just tell you what, the, what he's done. At Trade Genius Academy, the Bitcoin profit that Bob told us was going to happen. I remember when it was $3,300 a coin. And now today, Bitcoin is at $7,571 and a penny. This thing, it has went up $4,000 in like 90 days. Bitcoin's profit has soared over the last two months. Trade Genius has netted its traders 34% profit, spot on trades. And look at this chart. We, we've showed the chart, put it up there again. Brock's cho showing you the Bitcoin chart, that what it's done. But look at also Bob's chart. You can see it, it just elevates 34%. Uh, also, uh, some of the folks he encouraged to use the TNT BTC chart, they have netted over 13% profit gained and uh, another 21% on another uh, plan he was using, the RVN, the Raven coin. These are all crypto coins that he has uh, encouraged people to be able to look at this. These are, these are Bitcoin, Raven coin, and the other one, um, TNT BTC okay. have yeah, tell them about what you just did, Bob. I mean, this is un uncharted waters, really. Yeah, well, we, we we knew that the cryptocurrency, we've seen this before. The problem when people saw the collapse in 2017 and in 2018 was the first time people were exposed to cryptocurrencies. 
But the cryptos have done this four other times in the past where it has really, really, really deep sell-offs. And then it comes back and it comes back stronger. So we we were positioning our people into these moves. And one chart that you don't have, we had, we had people in Litecoin at 25 and it topped out at over 100 Paul, what? and, we, and these, these, trades are not, these trades are not done yet. So part of this is China. This is the Chinese people worried about devaluation of the yuan, and they're pouring their money to get it out of the country. Same with Venezuela, Turkey, Argentina. The countries that are worried about their currencies are moving into the cryptocurrencies. And so we've had this tremendous move. This month, a little back in filling, but you know we're going to, between now and 2021 for Bitcoin, it's going to go from where it is now, seven, eight thousand. It's going to at least, at least go above where the all-time high was, and you know, estimates are from thirty-two to one hundred thousand dollars for the coin, and so, and that's just a reflection on the weakness of the fiat currency. But Paul, that's just half the story. Gold and silver are breaking out too. We've been telling people for. For gosh, well, how many times I've been telling you this whole year is like, get yourself positioned in gold, get yourself positioned in silver, get yourself positioned in the miners. They're going to break out, and every time on the mainstream media they tell you gold's going to eight hundred, gold's going to eight hundred, blah blah blah, silver's going to eight. Well, gold is about ready to take out the high from two years ago, and once it does that, Paul is going to make an assault on the all-time high, and because the Federal Reserve is going to lower interest rates. And when they lower interest rates, then people want to buy things that are going to hold their value against the currency. And that's going to be gold, silver, the miners, and crypto. And not just that. You're looking at these specialty metals now. Now that China's rattling the saber on rare earths, you know, stock, uh, stock, um, miners that own companies like it, that do cobalt or vanadium or uranium, things of that nature, those are all publicly traded U.S. companies. All of those stocks are going to go up. We're following them all. So people who trade with us are going to be well positioned to continue to make, you know, these kind of gains over the next six to 12 months. And uh, and just just the last couple of days, these miners are starting to explode again. People are anticipating and, and we're right there with it. You know, we don't listen to the news. You know, we just watch what we just watch what the big money is doing. And the news is there to, to deceive people. And that's why we like to get on shows like yours, Paul, where where you can actually just tell, cut the chaff and tell people what's really happening, so people aren't going to lose money to these 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 people in New York. Yeah, you're you're better off on my show than on CNN, Bob. I can tell you that right now, and because uh, we're going to the, our audience, which is growing leaps and bounds, but our audience is educated to the point that they're tired of the fake news, they're tired of the distractions, and you know when Pelosi makes this statement. Well, I don't want the president to be impeached. Just go to prison. Can you help me understand something, Bob? If he has, what crime? Have we found a crime? Russian collusion, confusion, delusion. If there's no crime, why does the man need to go to prison? But if he's going to, if he's so bad he needs to go to prison, then you better impeach him. I mean, this is stupid. What are they talking about, Bob? I mean, help us understand it, Bob. What's going on? Yeah, it's really, it, this is what's called narrative building. Nancy just says it like she just assumes that, that we, yeah, you know, we all agree with that, you know. Let's just, just cut to the chase and get put this guy in prison already. Gosh, everybody knows, you know, he's a crook, you know. What they're trying to do is they're trying to, what's, we call it in sports, be the future. They're trying to be the future. If they say it enough times, that's the narrative you got to fight against. That's why Trump is so bombastic. You know, and he blows up these narratives immediately. He doesn't let the spark become a forest fire. And he turns right around, like when Biden was saying this, that, and the other thing, he just dropped the bomb right in Biden's lap around saying, hey, you can't get the African-American vote. Remember when you voted for this policy that put people in felonies for, for small use of drugs? They wouldn't be able to vote for you, Joe. You know, so he he's ready with all the counterpunching. That's all Nancy's doing. She's just trying to be... She's just trying to create a future. They don't care about the truth. You know that. I mean, these are, these are, as you know, Paul, as a pastor, they're just tickling the, they're just tickling the ears of people who are frustrated because they didn't vote for them. Folks, we got Bob Kudla with us right now. He's a straight shooter. He is a genius. If you look at his numbers, 
and he's a Christian. And I, I, I remember sitting and having lunch with Bob about three to four years ago in California, and I looked across the table at the guy, and it didn't take me five minutes to realize he was a straight shooter and that he really cares about his customers. He wants people to learn. And you know what I think about it, folks? If you're sitting there right now, look at the camera and just say, I don't know anything about Bitcoin or uh, uh, I don't know anything about stocks. It, but I, I don't know about gold and silver, but I would like to invest. He's the kind of guy you could pick up the phone right now, dial the number 1-800-949-1408. He would help you get into Bitcoin if you want to, or he could teach you how to trade. You could start at a small entry and get going. I mean, really, guys, seriously, he's a straight shooter, and I just spoke to his daughter. She's graduating today. I mean, family man, Christian company, loves people, and he's successful. And the reason he's successful, he's got God in his life. The man knows how to pay his tithe and be obedient to the Word of God and, and treat people right. Folks, seriously. Bob, when you said Bitcoin might end up going to 80,000 or 100,000, I about fell off my chair. But do you really think that's a possibility? Yeah, so here's the math behind it. So uh, Bitcoin's doing this thing called a halving. And what a halving means is that when these miners do what they call the proof to create a new coin, they, they're only going to get, after next year, they're only going to be able to get half as much money as they did before. So they, it's called, it's basically called having the inflation rate of the growth of coins, which ends when they, when they produce 21 million coins, essentially it'll be done. And so going into that, the value of the coins start to rise. And if you look at past examples, these are, these moves are five to six to eight times where they were when these moves have started. Litecoin is right now about three quarters of its way through, Paul, and it's gone from 20 it hit a peak of almost 120, and we think it'll end up at about 175. If we just apply the same mathematics to Bitcoin, which is a year behind it, you're looking at eight times, you know, 3,000. So you're looking at at least, at least 24,000, if not more. And depending on when you want to say that the move has started, some people say the move started at 5,400. Well, then you're looking at 40,000. Some people said the move hasn't started yet. And so that's why you get these different numbers. But all I know is if I own something today at 7000 and somebody said there's a potential for 24000 and you throw a little bit of money at it, you know, uh, because in the past it's done similar things, that, that, that's a good bet. And think about stock markets and th things happen in rhythms and rhymes. And so when you see the same thing unfolding and you see the same backdrop of economic macro then, then you say, look, look, this is a good return on my my risk capital. And when we talk Bitcoin, we're not we're talking you invest, you know, five percent of your you know of your investable assets. You know, you don't sell the house. You're not putting it on a credit card. And that not dumb stuff. <laughs> and the same with gold and silver in the miners. You know, you're putting five to ten percent there, and and you're going to get outside gains. <clears throat> and just let people know what I do. Some people have been hearing me on this show for for two or three years is we don't take anybody's money. So what we do is we educate and we inform. We provide the trade signals. We tell you when we think is a good time to get into or out of certain stocks or certain cryptos. We have trading rooms where people can come as, as a community and, and trade whether you're advanced or whether you're, you're just learning. And that this is good room, good people. We all think alike. <clears throat> you know, we all come from places like Paul's show and things of that nature that we, have, we all share the same worldview, and everybody's very helpful. And then we have personal coaching, and we have training packages. So so our goal is to get you educated, get you confident, get you making money, and then we all win that way. Uh, Bob, Bob Kudla, folks, this is TradeGeniusAcademy.com. That's TradeGeniusAcademy.com. And uh, rhythms and rhymes. I'm going to remember that. Uh, it's sort of like the movie trading, uh, Training Day. Everything is cries and smiles, okay? So with Bob, it's rhythms and rhymes. He knows that there is a rhythm. There's absolutely, a, you know, literally a eco, if you will, a uh, ebb and flow across things in life. It almost could apply some of the uh, Fibonacci sequence to almost everything. It seems to always be true. Bob, let me ask you a question. Um, 
when these things are, you, you've got a Father's Day special right now, big time. Tell us how it works, how they, people could get the 40% off or even 50% off. What do you've got going for us? Yeah, so we have bundles, one through six, that we've already pre-discounted, Paul, 50 to 60%. And those bundles, if you're a basic stock trader or a basic crypto trader or advanced stock trader or advanced crypto trader, and then some people like to trade both, so we have a bundle for that. And then we have other bundles to help people learn how to trade at the same time having access to those trading rooms or get our, our education packages, which really step-by-step step on <clears throat> how the stock market works, how the crypto markets work, all the way through how to, how to place advanced trades. <clears throat> so we do that. And then if you just want to, to pick and choose what you want it, you can pick what's called non-bundled items. And those are 40% off whatever the list price is. And we even have software indicators as part of these bundles that that um, allow you to actually see on the screen where it literally says, you can see it there on the, some of the things that we sent you, it literally says buy and sell. So there's a, you know, we try to make it as easy for people as possible. And our algorithms generate those those buy and sell signals. And and then we're in the rooms to help people with within the trading in the chat rooms all day long. So you just go to tradelegatgenius.com or trading or um, the uh, uh, tradegeniusacademy.com, and you can um, you can get access to talk to one of our, uh, our 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 inside sales folks and uh, and you know get the information you need. And we're going to run these specials till Saturday night midnight, Paul. And so take advantage of it. What we charge for the service is nothing compared to the what you're going to get out of it in terms of uh, education, insight, and profits from from trades uh folks and, and look and bob you've been looking at everything going on right now the trump presidency has been m miraculous beyond quiet as far as economics and i heard guys last summer talking about the recession of 2019 and i started laughing because i kept looking at wait a minute you've got look how low the unemployment numbers are look how strong the dollar is look how high the market's going uh, and the tariffs is bringing in cash. Uh, so in the tax break has hadn't even kicked in yet. And these guys don't understand. They're so used to just the, the normal political cycle. They don't understand real dollars and cents and, and they really should. They, they're looking bad. There's even some guys in, in prophecy, Bible prophecy guys running around hollering the recession, recession, recession. Guys, it don't work like that. God blesses he has, if you want to look at prophecy, when Donald Trump made Jerusalem the capital of Israel and moved the embassy there, he put a blessing on America that you can he just, God don't lift his hand off that. Okay, get ready. So, Bob, I'm going to tell you, I'm not so sure we're going to see even the 12-year dip. I'm just not so sure that we don't continue, that this thing may outlast the odds and the odd makers. I mean, uh, the numbers don't lie, do, do they? Yeah, there's nothing in front of us now that says recession, and and there's tools that we can put in place to uh, extend. And we talked about those infrastructure, keeping the tariffs going, <coughs> excuse me, and you know so on and so forth. So I'm confident. I'm the same way, Paul. You know, I I don't like the gloom and doom, um, you know, scenario. People like to, you know, feed off of that because you know that gets people talking. But you know, it's nothing in front of me says that's going to happen now that doesn't mean you know the stock market can't take some big dips right it doesn't mean that there won't be a rotation in stocks look trump's going after the social media companies next paul and and the, and the stock market is what's called tech heavy so between china and trump you know he could he can make the nasdaq go down quite a bit but that doesn't mean anything's happening to the economy <clears throat> it means money's going to shift other places so People just need to be aware of why things happen. <clears throat> the mainstream media will tell you that Trump is crashing the stock market. I'm sorry. People are coming up to pick, my, pick us up to go to my daughter's graduation. And um, so you have, you have these situations where they try to isolate events and make them into, into big things. And when that's not the case at all. And that's why Trump wins every time because he, he's looking at a bigger picture and they're chasing – the wrong target and he keeps hitting the bigger target so 
just people just have confidence and comfort that that we're pushing along here and and the things that can come at us are things we can't control anyway nor can trump and then we just react to those events if they ever show up Bob, we're going to have to let you go get to that graduation. Your daughter's graduating <laughs> high school. Uh, it's great to talk yeah, to you sorry, again. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You got it. This is a big day for her and for you and your family. So congratulations to her. She's got a bright future, I can see right now. And she's got a, a genius for a father, so she can't go wrong, all right? The apple's not too far from the tree. So thanks, Bob, for being with us. And guys, everybody. Go to TradeGeniusAcademy.com. Use that promo code Father's Day. Save 40%. Get in the game, okay? Get in there and let Bob get you started. Bob, thanks a lot for coming on, being with us. We appreciate you greatly. Yeah, th thanks for squeezing me and Paul. Everybody have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bob Kudla, folks, at TradeGeniusAcademy.com. Uh, he's a genius. Trump's a genius. Maybe you're a genius. We'll talk to you next time. God bless.